Hey, what is going on good people and today we're going to be taking a look at a new terminal file manager and see what it has to offer. I want to say that please don't compare this to Yahtzee as this was not built to be like that. This is more of like a simple straightforward friendly UI terminal file manager. Some people might even prefer this over Yahtzee but anyways. The way I installed it was using the curl. By default if you installed it with curl it's going to go straight to the XDG home path. But for Mac, it's usually on the users slash library slash application support. So if you're on Linux and Mac, you can go ahead and download using these. But if you just want to use Homebrew, you can do that as well. Or if you want to use Arch or Linux OS, you can as well. And for Windows, you would run these commands. If you, for whatever reason, is like me, you don't want to put your config files in the application support directory. And you just want to move that into the .config folder in your RC file. Just make sure that you export your home path in there first. You can check the path for a super file by running SPF and then PL. Press enter and then you should see the path. So for me, it's located in the .config. For you, you might see something like the application support here. So if you don't want to do that, you can set that in your RC file first. Now let's open up super file by running SPF. And you can already see this really nice UI right here. Where I'm at right now is the main panel and on the right hand side you can see the preview inside that directory. So I can toggle that off and toggle that on. Then I can go to the left hand side which is my sidebar. And here are just default stuff and the pin sections are the directories that I have pinned. We can also come down to the processes by doing control P which we currently have nothing running right now. And then we also have the metadata section which just shows the information of the file. And then we also have the clipboard. The footer section can actually be hidden as well, so we can toggle that and toggle that back up again. If you don't remember the key bindings, you can sort of just press question mark and that will show you all your key bindings, which I will definitely get into. And Q to just close that. Now let's get to some of the configurations. If you are a Vim user, I guess the default key bind might already be okay for you. But if not, you can just switch them to the Vim key binds. So in the documentation, if you come to the custom hotkey section, you should see the default hotkeys shown here. But if you want something that is more like Vim, then you can use these down here. So the way I have it set up is kind of just mixed between the two of them. So it's pretty much just preference. So I would recommend you to experiment to see which one you like more. If you've downloaded this correctly, you should have the theme file, a config.toml file and a hotkey file. So for example, if we go back here, I can press J and K to go up and down. I can press enter to go into a directory, dash to go back, or I can even use L to go into the directory, dash again to go back. I can do control S to focus the sidebar, move around them. So these are just the defaults and I can move down to the pinned ones. Let's say we go back here and we want to pin this directory that we are currently in. So I can do shift P and that just pins this whole directory. You can go back and switch between them. So that is pretty nice. I can press control P to go down to the process section, control D to go to the metadata section, and you can just move between these as well. So you should see the folder name, the size, the modifying date and permissions. We can also press N to create a new pane or basically like a new main panel. And then we can go in there and also preview the things inside of here. So for example, we're in super file and when we go into here, because it is a hidden directory, we don't see anything, but we can do dot to show a hidden directory. Now I can create one more main panel as well by doing N again. And then the way I have it set up is I can use shift H and L to move between these. But by default, it should be something like shift tab or tab. So the shift H and L is something that I changed on my own. I mean, they do have it in the default ones, but if you want to use the Vim ones, it doesn't have them, which is kind of strange. And I try to make control L and H to work, but apparently it just doesn't work. So I just went with this one. You can close the panel by doing control W, or you could also set it to Q if that's what you prefer. I can toggle the preview on the right hand side with F, just like that. I can also open a file into my NeoVim editor straight away. So for example, if we go into here and I want to open this file straight into my editor from here, I can just do E and this takes me straight into my NeoVim. So that is crazy good. I really like that. If I just quit out of here, 
then it takes me back to where exactly I was. If I want to open this whole directory, I can do capital E. And that opens me just like that straight into oil. So that is great. Quit again to go back to the same place. If you look on the bottom right of the main panel right now, you'll see something called the browser. I can go into the selection mode with M and this allows me to select multiple directories and files. So if I press enter, you should see the blue highlight right there. And I'm just selecting multiple files right now. So for example, if I selected these three files, I can press Y and that should just yank everything to our clipboard on the bottom right right here. Now let's say I don't want this anymore and I just sort of just want to select like three things. I can also do, so I can go into select mode and then press shift and then J or K to go back up. You can also select everything in this directory by doing shift A. If for example, we try to delete this random file right here, we can do D and it'll ask if you want to delete the file. So of course, yes. And in the process, you'll see that a file has been deleted. Other simple things like P to paste, A to, you know, add a file, and then putting slash at the end will just turn that into a directory. So things like that are just already available. You can R to rename it to whatever you want, which is good to see. For the config.toml file, if we take a quick look at this, we have the theme as the Tokyo Night. But there are a lot of themes you can actually choose from here and you can even make your own theme if you want. We also have the editor set as NeoVim. What this does is that it just allows me to open the file from within here straight into NeoVim, both file and directories. And these are just some other default settings that you can mess around with. The other thing that I changed here is the transparent background. So I have that set to true. And keep in mind that this will only work if you have your terminal set to transparent as well. So like mine, it's currently transparent. Maybe I can just show you a quick example here. If I just save and quit this, go back here and quit out of this and go back in. That's basically how it looks at first. So I think the transparent version looks a lot better. But when it comes to image rendering or image previews, from what I know, it is currently being worked on. So hopefully that gets implemented. But yeah, I don't really mind. Superfile is really great and it does have some really nice UI. And the important functionality is there. It might not be the most featured packed, but it was built by a high school student. To me, that is insane. Definitely give it a try and maybe let me know what you think about it. It does need some work in some areas, but overall, it actually works fine. Before we end this video, I just want to say thank you guys so much. I just hit 2000 subs, which might not seem a lot, but it really is to me. I just want to take some time to say thank you all for the support. It has been a crazy couple of months and yeah, I will see you all in the next video.